Hi everyone and welcome back to my video series on coding with Flutter. I'm very happy to be back on my YouTube channel. And on this video I'll talk about platform aware widgets as a way to tailor the look and feel of our apps on iOS and Android. With Flutter we have access to a rich set of widgets that can be used to build beautiful looking UIs on Android and iOS. And while material design is often the solution of choice for the look and feel of most Flutter apps, we actually have the freedom to choose between Material and Cupertino widgets depending on whether we are targeting Android or iOS. What this means is that you get to choose between Material or Cupertino widgets and you have complete control on how you tailor the UI on each platform. In practice, this means that every time you want to get platform-specific look and feel, you'll need to check on which platform you're currently running and return the corresponding widget from the Cupertino or Material widget collection. However, as your code grows, it quickly becomes impractical to have conditionals like this all over the place. In practice, it would be nice to be able to abstract away platform-specific differences and build a small set of widgets that are platform-aware. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a base platform-aware widget class and then I'm going to use this as the foundation for building some platform-aware widgets. So we will see how to build a platform-aware switch widget, and then we will focus on how to make a platform-aware dialog, which is something more complex than a simple widget and requires some additional considerations. Okay, so to start off, what we want to do is to build a base class that will be extended by all our platform-aware widgets. And to do this, we're going to leverage the power of abstract classes and generics. So let's see how this looks like. Over here, I have defined a platform widget abstract class, and this class uses generics to define two types. And these two types both need to extend from widget as a base class. I have then declared this class to extend from stateless widget and then I have these two methods which are called build Cupertino widget and build material widget. And these methods are not implemented here. So any custom widget classes that extend from this have to implement these two methods. Finally, we have our build method, which is where the magic happens. So in here, we can check if we are running on iOS and return a Cupertino widget and if we are running on Android or any other platform, we can return a material widget. And just so you know, this platform class that we are using over here already defines six different operating systems, and this list might grow in the future. So for this demo, I'm focusing on Cupertino and material widgets, but if you wanted, you could define your own custom design set for platforms other than iOS and Android. Okay, so to see a simple example of how this class can be used, I have implemented a custom platform aware switch. And this is shown on the iOS simulator and the Android emulator over here. So as you can see, the implementation for this class is very simple because all we have to do is to implement the build Cupertino widget and the build material widget methods and return the corresponding widgets. So in this case, both the Cupertino switch and the switch classes take a Boolean value and an unchanged callback. And so all we have to do is to pass these values to the constructor of the platform switch and we're good to go. And if I head over to the switches page, I can see how this is used. So if I scroll down a little bit, over here I have a widget tree and at some point I can just use a platform switch and I'm good to go. And you can see that this looks differently on iOS and Android, like this. So you might already be using the default material switch class in your code. And if you want to make this platform aware, you can just replace it with a platform switch. And the reason this works so well is that both the switch and Cupertino switch classes have a very similar API. All right, next we can look at dialogues and dialogues come in various forms and shapes. So for this demo, we are going to focus on one very specific dialogue, which is called an alert dialogue. So our alert dialogue is going to have a title, some content and one or two action buttons. So this is how our dialogue looks like. 
And as you can see, this looks quite different on iOS and Android. And it also behaves quite differently as well, because on Android, this dialog is dismissible, which means that the user can tap on the back button or outside the dialog to dismiss it. However, on iOS, the dialog cannot be dismissed. And this is consistent with how system-wide dialogs work on iOS. So not only we can implement platform-specific appearance for this dialog, but also platform-specific behavior. And this is something that your users will appreciate because your app will conform to the platform-specific interactions that they are already familiar with. Okay, so how do we build this dialog? Well, first of all, we declare a platform alert dialog class, which extends platform widget with types Cupertino alert dialog and alert dialog. Then we need to implement the build material widget and the build Cupertino widget methods. And this is where we create our platform specific dialogs. So on Android, we have alert dialog and on iOS, we have Cupertino alert dialog. And then we pass three arguments to both of these widgets. So these are title, content, and actions. The first two are the same. And for the third one, we are using a helper method called actions. Now this method returns a list of either one or two widgets. And so if we have specified a cancel property, then it will return two widgets. Otherwise it will just return one widget. And the widgets that are returned here are of type platform alert dialog action. And platform alert dialog action is yet again another subclass of platform widget which returns a flat button for Android and a Cupertino dialog action for iOS. So if we didn't have this class, we would have had to check if the platform was iOS or Android inside the actions method of platform alert dialog. Instead, by defining platform alert dialog action, we favor composition and our actions method becomes simpler. Okay, so next let's see how we can show a dialog. So if I head to the dialogs page, I can show you how to do this. So here, for example, I create a platform alert dialog object and I give it some parameters and then I call this method called show with context. So how does this work? Well, this is just a simple helper method that I built on top of the show dialog method in the Flutter SDK. So all I'm doing here is to call show dialog and then I decide that the dialog is only dismissible if we are not running on iOS. And the third parameter of show dialog is a builder that needs to return a widget. So in here I can just return this. Then I need to decide what to return from the show method. And here I just want to follow the same convention as the show dialog method. So the show dialog method returns a value only once it's being dismissed. So how does this work? Well, when either button is pressed, we call this dismiss method which in terms calls navigator context dot pop with a boolean value that we pass in. And then this value is returned as the result of the show dialog method. So we are going to get false if the user has pressed on cancel. We are going to get true if the user has pressed on confirm. And we are going to get a new value if the user dismissed the dialog or pressed the back button on Android. So for the purposes of our alert button, we want to return either true or false. And so in here, if we detect a null value, we return false instead. Okay, so after all this theory, I can show you how this works on Android. So over here, I can show a dialog with two buttons. And if I press on logout, then I get a snack bar with a value of true. And then if I show this again, and I press on cancel, then I get a snack bar with the value of false. And once again, if I dismiss the dialog by tapping outside, I also get a value of false. Okay, so this completes our overview of platform aware alert dialogs. And just to be clear, here I've decided to focus on one very specific type of alert, which only supports either one or two buttons. And I've designed the API for my platform alert dialog around these constraints. 
In the next video, we will talk some more about platform aware widgets, and in particular, we will focus on scaffold and app bar, and we will see if it's possible to create a platform aware app bar. In any case, if you head over to my GitHub, you can find all the source code for this sample project on this page. Finally, if you want to keep up to date with my videos and articles, you can sign up on my website, codingwithflutter.com. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.